My name is Preston Sampson. I'm an artist uh, from West Palm Beach, Florida. More specifically and importantly from a community called Pleasant City where President Williams and I both grew up. Uh, I went to University of Maryland and studied art at, uh, at the university there and studied under some of the greats, uh, Sam Gilliam and Dr. Driscoll. I know President Williams, he and I played basketball in high school together, but he was a year younger than me. So when we first got reconnected, he was like, you know who this is, you know who this is. And I'm like, I can't, I couldn't put it together. But then when I saw his picture in the yearbook on a, on a, a clip they did in West Palm Beach on the news, I said, oh man, that's choo-choo right there. That's, uh, that's uh, but, but he was a really bright kid. I remember he was on the speech and debate team. He was smart. I was not. <laughs> So we didn't share that in common, but you know, a year difference in high school makes a lot of difference, you know, with your, how you remember people. But then as we started talking more and more, I'm like, wait a minute. And my best friend's sister's best friend of his, you know, was a good friend of his. So I know President Williams from a long time, but we got reintroduced through uh, uh, Kendrick Ashton, who came to my studio one day and asked me, say, you from Pleasant City, right? Do you know anything about Pleasant City? And I laughed because I'm right in the middle of Pleasant City. And he puts Daryl on the phone and it was on. We started talking about, you know, us and West Palm Beach. He asked me what my afro was. <laughs> I used to have this big, you know, Michael Jackson afro. You know, and, I, and I was about 105 pounds. Of, but we, we talked and we laughed and we connected. And, um, and then the next thing, you know, it's magic has happened and I'm so thankful and grateful to him you know for making this you know allow me to share my gift with the university and also to have the university share with me you know the, the, this is really a humbling and one of the most gratifying things I've been involved with and I've been through a few things but this is really special to me and it's and I want to do my best for Choo Choo, <laughs> you know, for, for, for Daryl and his family. Because as a matter of fact, we live right across the street from each other, I guess at a certain point. But my mother sold his sister's prom gown. That's how far, how deep we are in the, in the roots with each other. And to see yesterday with the, the, the ceremony, how many people came from West Palm Beach and from far and wide and just really showed the love for him as, and he deserves every single bit of it. So it's, just, it's just been a tremendous honor this whole weekend for me and to see him and just sit and watch him do his thing, be him. That just, that, that makes my heart absolutely full. The name of the piece I, I called after much consternation and, and uh, you know, thought process going through it. I, I just, I kept, coming back to full circle. You know, we talked about all of the levels of, of full circle that, what, that came about this. The first thing was, I would say, I visited this campus with my son in 2015. And we came on an empty campus, a campus during the summer. And I looked around at the buildings and the buildings are, or very much like every college and university. Everybody's got a tower, a bell tower, everybody's got a chapel, you know, it's beautiful, you know, that the students walk. But there's no other campus, or no other place on earth has a tree like that tree, that emancipation of. And without knowing anything about what the tree was, I went and just marveled at it. I said, I looked at this tree with the branches touching the ground. You know, and it just, I, I could, the first thing I say, oh, they don't trim this tree. They've never trimmed this big tree. And then I went to read and say, oh, no wonder they better not cut this thing. And, and it, but it's, it was phenomenal. It took my breath away. And I've always thought of that tree. So when we started talking about the painting, I said, wait a minute, my whole focus, not the entire focus, but I started with this abstraction of a tree, you know, a symbolic of the tree and the branches. And, and I couldn't help but think how many brilliant people and who have come and sat under this tree. I mean, from as far back as when the university was founded, even before that, 
the impact and how the roots underneath the surface and the branches have touched, you know, uh, the, you know, they've touched people, touched people's lives, changed lives at this institution. And that was the thing that I took away from it that blew me away. So it's starting the painting, that was my start point about the tree. But also the things that branched off from the tree, you know, where these roots went and where the limbs, how they, who they touched, how they touched. And uh, in all of my research, the person I kept coming back to was Mary Peak. You know, I mean, fierce, fierce woman. You know, I mean, just brilliant and, and, and touched so many of those kids in the beginning, you know, and that was a, a, an area that I knew I wanted to deal with. And how it, it, how that tree bridged generations, and it bridges generations long after we're gone. I mean, this is going to be, it's eternal. It's, it, it's, it's grounded into you know, the earth and the air and wind, dirt. And all of this makes us who we are. And so going from there into the modern, you know, the modern contemporary and even the futuristic kid. I think the, the young man in the painting is representative of all students. Uh, and he also, as I would look at it late at night in the studio, four o'clock in the morning, I'm like, man, he looks like a piece of wood. <laughs> he does, he was like, he's chiseled. He's not, uh, he's strong. He, he's, he's pondering what's, looking back at the past and saying, you know, where's he going? Um, and also he's kind of morphs into the tree as, as does, you know, Mary Peak and even the, the soldier that's in there. Um, also, there's a, a part that, a, a symbol that I have in there, which is uh, the St. Kofa bird, which is, I think out of all of the Adinkra symbols that I've used often in my work, that's a pretty constant in my work, that it means something in that. You gotta remember your past. Don't forget the past in order to move present. It's not like we sticking in the past, but how do we, but if you don't remember where you came from, you know, you're destined to repeat, you know, some of the bad things. So I just believe that in the concept of the whole painting, a circle in the tree is a, you know, very, uh, it's a concept of a tree and it's swirling. It's, it, it feels like it's moving. That tree looks like it's dancing. You know, it's like people reaching for the sky. It's, um, and often in my work, I like to have, you know, symbolic imagery and, um, you know, things that, that will let the viewer of the painting and create some of their own story and narrative, which I think is important. But so having the, 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 the convergence of elements, and it's almost like this beautiful storm to me. I mean, the colors and the, and the figures, it, it, I think they all come together, it, which is consummately my work, you know. It, but trying to pay homage to this university, and there's so many stories, there's so many directions, there's so many things. As a matter of fact, I'd like to do an entire series about this, this college, but, you know, there's only so much that you can do, you know, in a, in a, you know, you can't tell the whole story. There's no way to tell the whole story of Hampton, you know, in one image. But I did what I thought was an homage to, from what I have taken away from my experience and the friends and the people that I know. And um, that was where the inspiration for the painting comes. I want them to feel like in all of my work, the love and the passion from it. I like for them to, and it's an interesting question because anytime your work is in public uh, spaces, and especially uh, higher learning institutions, um, schools, um, I, you want the hope that some kid will be inspired by something that's in this painting that they'll maybe see another way to look at things or maybe they'll uh, investigate and see who, why, what, why did this guy do what he did. And um, one of my, my um, I would say a central message in my work is always family. It is the strength of our people. And that is something that I would really like to 
that I would like for people to think about my work, you know, when they see it. And, and also legacy, you know, and they'd understand that we're part of a bigger thing. It's not just us as individuals, but how that, just like those branches and the roots in that tree, that they touch as all of us touch each other, you know, and, uh, and hopefully in positive ways and ways that make the world a better place.